Hi, my name's Kieran from 81 Vintage and today we're going to be making a vintage style cat candy holder. If you're new here, I create lots of quirky furniture and home decor that I use around my house and that I sell for profit. If that's the type of thing that you're interested in or you're looking for some unique ideas, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Halloween is one of my favourite times of year and I especially love the decorations, I mean who doesn't? Especially those vintage style ones but they're really difficult to find and they're really expensive when you do. So, being inspired, I decided to create my own. I actually planned to do this last year when I was gonna sell them for my shop, but I didn't get round to it. So I already had all the supplies on hand. To start with, I bought these plastic little fish bowls last year. They're actually in the party aisle and they're meant for cocktails, but they were a pound in Poundland and I knew they'd be perfect I wanted to cover the bowl so that I could begin to sculpt the face details and I wanted to use my good old favourite plaster bandages. Plaster bandages are really easy to work with and they really do create that vintage antique paper mache look without having to go through all the effort and all the layers. So I cut the bandage into layers, dipped it in some warm water and laid it over the outside of the piece. Once I had it covered, I just blended my hand over it and what that does is reactivate a little bit of the plaster and it helps close in the weave so it's not as noticeable. I'm going to focus on making the handle. I was really inspired to use these vintage style beads that Mike's mum gave me. Just those colours and I wanted to shape a piece of strong metal, threaded them over and decided that would be a funky handle. Next it was time to come up with our design, so I had a couple of reference pictures that I was working from and I just decided to go for a simple cat face. I went for very arched eyes and also a simple face. And I just tried to make sure that this was as... And I just tried to make sure this was as... And I just tried to make sure this was as symmetrical as possible. Yeah. Well done. So that it didn't throw off the balance. Then it was time to sculpt out the face. And to do this, I cut very small sections of plaster bandage, about two inches long, and I used that, rolled it up, dipped it in the water, and then began to sculpt the outlines. And what I would do is follow the lines and just massage it into place. You have probably about 10 minutes worth of working time before that section goes hard. You don't need to glue the pieces on, they will adhere to themselves, but what you do need to do is just make sure that you massage it into the final shape. As it gets harder throughout that 10 minutes, you can begin to refine that shape a lot more as it gets a lot harder. Now you might think that I'm making this look easy. I do have some experience with this, but not that much. It's actually very straightforward. And I actually find it a lot easier than working with clay, which has a lot longer open time. Just like when I painted my cowboy chest, and I'll include a link up above, I do this in one sitting. This is very much a one sitting type project. I have to be really strict with myself and say I have to finish this in one sitting. Otherwise, I find that I will procrastinate and keep coming back to it and eventually I won't be any happier with the final result. Now I find creatures and animals always look cuter with a bow tie, so I'm just adding one here. I'm using big clumps of pasta bandage and then shaping them out. I'm gonna leave this video running a little bit longer and I'd really appreciate it if you would consider watching the whole thing. I'm really trying to grow my watch time and that would really help me. But if you're not interested in seeing exactly how I shape this piece, you can skip down to the description box and I tagged all of the time marks there and you can skip along to the next section. I also just want to say a quick thank you. While we're on holiday, we hit 1,500 subscribers. I am really appreciative for each and every one of you, and I hope that you're really enjoying my content. Mike will tell you that I see it every single time a new subscriber pops up on that count, and also how upset I get when one of you decides to leave. So please do stick around so you can catch a lot more projects.
Next, I noticed that I was missing those ears, and so I needed to add them in. So I took some thick cardboard, cut it out, double strengthed it, and then hot glued it into place. And then I wrapped that whole thing in a layer of plaster bandage and also helped support it from behind. This worked perfectly and it's super strong. It really is thick and tough. Plaster bandages are really affordable and you do get quite a lot in a pack. I buy mine from the range, they're £1.50 for a pack of two, and I maybe use a roll and a half on this project, so it's really, really affordable. So it's well worth giving it a try. Once I was finished with the sculpt, I let it dry completely and it also dries a lot quicker than clay. It takes about 24 hours and it's rock solid. And then it was time to paint it. First of all, I give the whole thing a coat of thick black paint. Here I'm using matte black paint, but you can use any black paint you have on hand. And you may notice that I have a brand new paint plate. It's funny that I'm painting a Halloween decoration with a Christmas plate. Then it was time to paint in some of the details. The brighter colours that I wanted to pop, I gave an undercoat of white. So things like the eyes and the nose, I added a bit more. Or I went over them twice with the second layer. I used acrylic paints to paint in the details on this piece. You can use any paint that you want, but I recommend using a good quality one because you don't really want to have to do multiple coats if you can avoid it. I went for some really strong colours on this piece. I used a lot of yellow okra and I also used a lot of deep red. And I just felt that they gave me that true vintage feel.
Once I was mostly happy with the piece, I noticed that a lot of the folk art inspiration that I had had these little dots all over them. So I used the back of the paintbrush to just add some extra detail, just to give the piece a bit more depth. And again, this is a one sitting project. I paint it up and I let it dry. Otherwise, I will procrastinate too much and I will keep messing with it until I ruin it. If you're like me, if you're like me, give it a try. It really does work. Next, it was time to distress it. Next, it was time to distress it. And I was a little bit sad about aging it up. I didn't want to ruin all that detail. Next it was time to age it up and I was a little bit sad. I didn't want to ruin all that detail so I gave it a light distressing, just catching those raised edge pieces. I just wanted it to look like it had been found at the back of an old vintage Halloween shop and hadn't really been used. But it had just been bouncing around from shelf to shelf. To add a bit of discoloration and age I added some dark wax and just buffed that off to a nicer shine. And this is how it came out. And then all that's left to do is to add your favourite treats. I am a sucker for sweets and I actually had to replace the sweets no less than four times because this was on the bottom of the stairs waiting to be photographed for this video and I couldn't help but nibble at those sweets. I hope you like this project and I hope you like this video. If you did like the video, please do give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to catch more content from me. Also, don't forget to let me know down in the comments whether you're gonna give this type of project a try yourself. Catch you on the next one.